Earthquakes! The latest on the Israeli government. Israel thwarts a major attack on a military base. Israel now is among 12 countries okayed for UK summer travel. Meanwhile, Iran's Kalamini says it is a public duty to fight against Israel, as Hamas flags are waving now on the Temple Mount. Gunboats and blockades threaten France and Britain ships over fishing rights. The debris from a Chinese satellite is expected to make re-entry this weekend. And the U.S. weighs on freezing $1 billion of assets for the Iranian government? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, Brother Wayne here from Alabama. This channel is all about world news and how it correlates to biblical prophecy. Well, if you're new to this channel, I would strongly urge you to subscribe to receive daily news updates on what goes on in the political and how it corresponds to the spiritual. Well, if you've been to my channel before, welcome back. Today, let's jump right into the verse of the day. We're going to be in the book of Daniel. And the book of Daniel is very unique because it gives us insight into what's coming upon the face of the earth. And in beginning in chapter 9, verse 27, And he, he being the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, which is seven years. And in the midst of the week, which would be at the three and a half year point, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, meaning the third temple is present. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Do you see here that a third temple will be built in the tribulation period. You know, m many times, it, it, many people that study biblical prophecy agree with that because it is here in the Bible, as well as in the book of Revelation, in which John measured the new and the third temple and gave us all the measurements for it. So you have uh, info coming from the Bible in multiple locations. Well, you might say, well, how is that significant? Well, now... Israeli government, you know, you potentially have Nafali Bennett who has the uh, charge or the leadership or the direction from President Rivlin of Israel to be the prime minister, to seek out if he can form enough votes to receive officially the prime minister with the majority at 61 votes. Remember, the Knesset is 120 votes. So he is very pro temple. Then you also have an election going on later on this year for the president of Israel. And for the president of Israel, you have a far left candidate and you have a right conservative candidate, very similar to the structure that you have here in the United States. Well, the right wing candidate supports building the third temple. You know, God puts kings into place. He removes kings and establishes kings. He establishes their reign, he takes away their reign. And God could just be right now raising up the right people in the Israeli government to allow and promote the third temple to be built. Watch that major third temple update right here coming at you right now today. I really hope you can see that. Okay, so now let's jump right into the earthquake report and let's see what's going on here. In the last 24 hours, we have 46 earthquakes greater than a 2.5 magnitude or greater. There's been a couple of ones that I really want to point out to you. There was a 6.0 in um, Macquarie Island. There was a 4.6 in the Chile, Bolivia region. And also there was a 4.6 in the Philippines, a 5.0 in Tonga, and a 5.0 in the south of Fiji Islands. 4.9 in Vanuatu. Those are typical locations that earthquakes happen on a regular basis. Now, one of the things that we're looking at here is that uh, on the lower end of the scale, there was a 2.6 in Hawaii, 2.7 in Alaska, 2.8 in Hawaii. Hawaii shaking. Alaska shaking. The West Coast is shaking. It was just earlier this week it was announced that there were over 10,000 tremors in the South California uh, area. 
in that region. There was over 10,000 tremors just this week alone. So the earth is shaking. Look for this to intensify over the weekend and as we come into the full moon cycle uh, for uh, here later on um, in, in the next few days. And so you will see that this earthquake activity will and could increase. So now let's take a look here at the Israeli government here. And Benjamin Netanyahu is essentially curbed Temple Mount access. And you know, you'll, we'll talk about this being the major Temple Mount update. We got a few stories talking about Temple Mount. But Prime Minister, and this is from the Times of Israel, allegedly agreed to temporarily curb the entrance of Jews to Jerusalem's Temple Mount to appease an ultra-conservative rabbi. He had Benjamin Netanyahu's Tuesday deadline to form the government passed. And now you have, you have a lot of people and a lot of parties now that are really at odds. Can you see the friction? Can you see here how this is nation against nation? Can you see how they're really just at each other's throats? And, and in case you've been under a rock or you just haven't followed the news or the world news in Israel lately. They've already had four elections. They've had four elections already, and they're having a hard time finding who that next prime minister is going to be. So I just want to say and, and just share with you that as you see this and as you see that they're going to give Bennett a chance here, and it looks like he actually could get it. There are several things that we're watching, including Rabbi Kaduri's prophecy. See, remember when he talked about there would be three elections, and then after the third election, a few things would happen, and then he had to seal it up, and he couldn't share? Remember, we're at that point of his prophecy. And in fact, it's an extra biblical prophecy, but yet it's kind of holding true. What about the 70 shepherds of Israel? I don't know if you've heard of that prophecy or not, but there would be 70 shepherds of Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu is in record history as the 70th shepherd or prime minister or leader of Israel if you go back and you look at history. And so lots of things are really in the play right here. I mean, when we sit back and we look at it, these extra biblical prophecies might not hold true. So as a Christian and as a person that follows biblical prophecy, I would strongly encourage you not to put your faith in these extra biblical prophecies, but just know that they're there and just know that they are, um, they haven't been proven untrue, but they just have always been true to this point. But know that they could turn untrue. But yet, what is it doing? It is putting that focus, it is putting that focal point back on Jesus. It is putting that focal point that he is coming to get us. He is coming soon. Are you ready? So now from the times of Israel, a major attack in Israel was thwarted as three gunmen shot in a firefight near a military base. Can you see the symptoms? Can you see that each and every one of these skirmishes is more symptoms of the sickness and that's going on? This is a fallen world. This is what we're seeing and it's really all over the place. So now, on a little bit different scenario here, Israel, remember how we've been talking about the virus, and, and just a short little update here in the middle for the virus. Israel now is among 12 green countries that the UK is going to say it's okay to travel to. And so the British government announced this as the first tentative step in resuming international travel. So that's a big mile marker here uh, for the United Kingdom. Because remember, we've talked about it on this channel. Uh, the United Kingdom government has just been in disarray uh, with perplexity, just with the things going on with Brexit and, and all those things. Yes, Brexit, no Brexit, uh, just the twist and turmoil of, of that group, right? So now from the Jerusalem Post, this is something that each and every one of us as believers should pay tremendous attention to. Iran's Khomeini says fight against Israel is a public duty. Remember, we're going through Ramadan right now. And, and as I mentioned in the opening, Ramadan, the, the Friday, the end of Ramadan, is, is, is a day that sometimes and historically um, some bad actors seem to come out at times. And so there has been some clashes on the Temple Mount. Videos are out there right now. You can look at your 
other video platforms, even as this one, and you can see just there's there's fighting, there's lots of fires, there's flags waving for Hamas at the Temple Mount. You can see that even now the tensions, the tensions are just right up to the Temple Mount now. It's right up to where it's all coming to a boiling point. I really hope you can see that this is everywhere. Um, not, not just in Israel, but things are happening everywhere. And you know, you talk about wars and rumors of wars, and I want to share this as well from Yahoo News. The UK and France were engaged in a naval standoff, okay, over fishing rights in the English Channel. Fishing rights. And when, when you see this, you know, Boris Johnson from the UK has pledged his unwavering support for the island. And they even spoke about the prospect of a French blockade coming. Um, 50 boats joined. There was a protest Thursday morning from French ports near the western Normandy coast, and 50 boats joined that. Um, and just it says it's what act of war. It was just a protest. So they're now protesting in boats. But you see that they're clashing. They're, it's, it's water wars. They're, they're, they're fighting over the resource for water and fish. You remember in Ezekiel 38 where Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Ethiopia, they all come against Israel to gain spoil, to gain the treasures, to gain the wealth of Israel. They all come against Israel because they are in economic turmoil. They are in a turmoil and an economic situation that they are willing to go to war, as in Ezekiel 38 says, to help save their population. Remember, countries sometimes go to war because it, it opens up factories, it opens up jobs, it opens up manufacturing, it opens up businesses and, and helps uh, just promote that economy. Okay, so wartime economy, I mean, there are great books and great articles on that over the course of history. So something to watch here, because the UK and France, they're, they're also having trouble. The wars and rumors of wars are very tremendous right now. Think about what's going on in Ethiopia. Think about when you have Egypt and the Nile River. and They're, they're fighting over the water of the Nile. They're fighting over their water that is needed for survival. You know, it's for crops, it's for irrigation, it's for food, it's, it's to drink. So you see this, and, and, it's, and it's not just there, it's, it's across the globe. Think about all the skirmishes that the United States and Russia have in submarines off the coast of Alaska. Think about how many times they come into skirmishes based upon disputes or disagreements about international waters. So when you see these things, don't get lost in the aspect and the fact that all these crazy things are happening. Every single one of these things are happening and you know, you're know you this, you're that. You can easily be distracted because God tells us that the day of the Lord's return shall come as a thief in the night. For Paul even tells us, for you know well, that I should not have to write you concerning this time, for you know that day shall come as a thief in the night. Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus to return? The time is now. The time is now. Do, are you right with the Lord? I'm going to ask you, are you right with the Lord? There is only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ. It's through admitting that you're a sinner, knowing that you can't get there on your own. For Ephesians tells us that God died on the cross so that no man shall boast, so that all who call upon the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. And then you have to believe. You must believe that he is the Son of God. He is who he says he is. He is who the living word tells us he is. And then you must confess your sins to him. Say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm putting my faith and trust in you and only you. Lord, I thank you. Guide me, direct me, lead me. Be my guiding light. And you must know 
and believe and take that leap of faith. If you have not given your faith and placed your trust in Jesus Christ, I'm going to strongly urge you that today is that day. For we all know that when there is a beginning, there is an end. And we all know that it is coming very, very soon. Are you ready? One day, God is going to call you. He's going to call me home. Will you be able to go in front of the Lord at that time? And will he be able to say, well done, good and faithful child. You may enter into the gates of paradise. Or you may enter in the place that has been prepared for you. Or will he tell you, depart. Depart from me, for I never knew you. For you might say, but Lord, Lord, I prayed, I tithed. I've I done all these things. I, I helped my neighbor. I cut his grass. I walked his dog. I took care, took care of my mom. I took care of my, my, my cousin that was hurt. You know what the Lord will tell you? Depart from me, for I never knew you. Do you see that the important the most important thing this entire life is knowing Jesus for eternity. You have the opportunity. Don't let it get away from you because one day when your name is called on the roll up yonder, you must go. We all must go. So I want to share one last story with you. And I saved it for the end because there's a lot of uncertainty with this event here, but I want to share this with you. The debris from the Chinese satellite is going to enter back into Earth, and they're saying May 9th, around 3.43 UTC, plus or minus 16 hours. Re-entry is uncertain. So if you look up, whether you're in Africa or Australia, or Europe, or North America, South America, and you see something flying through the sky, look up, as I say, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh, yes, but it also could be a Chinese satellite coming in the next few days. Well, once again, this is Brother Wayne from Alabama. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Lord willing, I'll see you next week. Have a great day.